Question number nine, the Honourable Michael Woodhouse. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Immigration. Does he stand by his response to oral questions on Thursday, 10 May, that his government was working to turn Labor's, quote, manifesto commitments into policy that can be implemented, end quote, and that we, quote, will see the fruition of that work in the very near future, end quote? If so, when specifically will he implement those policies? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Ian Lees Galloway. Thank you, Mr Speaker. In answer to the first part of the question, yes. In answer to the second part of the question, in the even nearer future. Ooh, OK. <laughs> Supplementary. Did he agree with uh, advice from officials in November that recommended, quote, uh, recommended to, quote, analyse whether further changes are needed to meet your policy objectives if the recent reduction in international students studying sub-degree programs is sustained, it is unlikely that there will be a need for further revisions to in-study work rights, end quote. Oh, Mr Speaker, all the advice that I have received on uh, in-study work rights is under active consideration, and the member will see the results of that in due course. Greg O'Connor. What are the government's priorities on immigration? Oh, Mr Speaker, we have two overarching priorities for immigration. The first is better matching the skills and talents that people bring to the skills that we need and where we need them. And the second is tackling the rampant exploitation of migrant workers and students. What has the Minister been hearing around New Zealand about the current immigration settings? Well, Mr Speaker, uh, the current, what I've been hearing as I've been visiting Chambers of Commerce Federated Farmers and other groups around the country is that the changes that were made in August last year are causing far more consternation than anything that the current government is proposing. Did the Minister agree to officials' proposal to provide advice to him in October this year on whether change is even needed to settings for in-study work rights? And doesn't that suggest that the government is far from convinced of its own policies? Oh, Mr Speaker, I continue to receive advice from officials on an almost daily basis. I agree to receive that advice. What we do with it uh, is a matter for this government to decide, and the member will see the results of that very soon. Very near future, he says. To the minister, isn't it the case that despite the, the drum-beating rhetoric of the campaign trail, the failure by the minister uh, to implement a single campaign policy uh, and those delays constitute another broken promise. Well, Mr Speaker, my approach to policy development is strongly guided by the lesson I learned from that member when he was a minister. By when he tinkered for years and then rushed out policy at the last minute before the election, policy that I hear on a day-to-day -day basis is causing havoc around the country. Absolute havoc. Question number 10, Dr Liz Craig. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Health and asks, 